Hey all, hope you all are good. Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about Airflow Metadata Database. The Airflow Metadata Database is the backend database that stores information about workflows, tasks, task instances, and their execution status. It serves as the central repository for managing and monitoring the workflows orchestrated by Apache Airflow. The metadata database stores details such as DAG definition, execution schedule, task states, task logs, task dependencies, and other metadata related to workflow execution. So, Airflow uses SQL Alchemy and Object Relationship ma uh, Mapping that is ORM in Python to connect with metadata database. So, by default SQLite is the default database that comes when you install Airflow for the first time. Other commonly common database are Postgres and MySQL. So, let's see where database is being configured in Airflow. Okay, if you open the Airflow configuration file, that is airflow.cfg, here you will see SQL Alchemy connection. So, when you will install it, you will find SQLite is the default database, but you can update it by pointing to Postgres or MySQL. So, I have set and pointed to Postgres SQL with this URL. So, here you can see airflow colon airflow at the rate localhost colon 5432 slash airflow so here first airflow stand for the user and second airflow stand for the password then comes the url then comes the port and then comes the database name if i open my postgres here you can find my three database so this airflow database points where all my tables of Airflow will be residing. If I open the psql tool and write slash l which list all the database. So here you can see this Airflow database has the owner Airflow which is mentioned here. Now let's view each table one by one. So Airflow metadata database contains several tables, each serving purpose in managing and monitoring the workflows, among which few are few of them are as follows. First, DAG, DAG run, DAG code, DAG tag, variable, XCOM, connection, import error, task instances, and log. These tables collectively form the backbone of the Airflow metadata database and facilitate the tracking, monitoring, and management of workflow orchestrated by Airflow. So let's have a look on each of the table one by one. So first is DAG table. So the DAG table serves as the central repository for storing metadata about the DAG defined in your Airflow environment. It allows the users to manage and configure the DAG property, schedule interval, ownership, and other settings. Additionally, the DAG table facilitates the orchestration, monitoring, management of workflows within Airflow by providing essential information about the DAG structure and properties. So, here you can see there are few columns present. First is DAG ID, which is a UDIN identifier in Airflow. Then is active, which indicates whether the DAG is active or inactive is paused, which indicates whether the DAG is paused or unpaused, schedule interval, which specifies the interval at which the DAG will run, which could be none, daily, hourly, weekly, monthly, or yearly, or any custom schedule interval. Then description, which provides the information or the summary for the DAG, default view which specify the default view of the DAG in the Airflow UI, which could be grid, graph, tree, calendar, and others. Then owner, who owns the DAG is, is specified by this parameter. Then comes the start date, which specifies the start date for the scheduling of DAG runs, end date, which denotes the end date when the scheduling of the DAG will stop. Then Template search path specifies the search path for Jinja template that will be used in the DAG. So let's have a look of this table. So 
so here we will write select star from dag so here you can see the first column is dag id which will be unique then we have talked about is paused column whether it is running or not then comes is sub dag which denotes if it's this dag is a sub dag of another dag or not is active whether it's active or not then the last parse time it denotes when the scheduler have last parsed and updated this tag then comes the file location it denotes where the file is actually residing which is inside the dags folder being specified so then comes the subdirectory path then comes the owner who is the owner which is basically defined in the default argument of the dag then comes the default view which is set to grid then comes the schedule interval it denotes what is the interval at which the dag will run then comes the max active run and and max active task which denotes how many active dag runs or task run can have in a dag and other parameters such as when the dag is expected to run next and and what's the end interval for that dag now let's have a view at the next table that is dag run table so dag run table is a cru is crucial for tracking and execution the uh, tracking the execution history of dag monitoring the status and diagnosing any issues that may arise during the execution it allow airflow users to analyze the past run troubleshoot failures and ensure the smooth functioning of workflows some of the columns of the dag run table are dag id which denotes the id of the dag run id it's a unique identifier for the specific run of the dag then comes the execution date which denotes the date and time when the dag run is, is scheduled to execute start which or you can say the state which indicates the current state of the dag run which is running success failed skipped or other then comes the start date it denotes the timestamp when the dag run started execution end date which denotes when the dag run has finished execution external trigger which includes whether the dag run was triggered externally manually or it's a scheduled run then comes the configuration which denotes the optional configuration parameter required for the dag run now let's see from the table so it will be dag underscore run so let's run this as specified there are various columns such as the dag id which will be unique across the airflow environment queued at when the dag queued execution date which denotes when the execution will actually start for the dag start date when the uh, when the dag started running and what's the end time and what's the status of the dag whether it got success skipped failure or other then comes the run id then here is the external trigger and run type if it's a manual run then external trigger will be true if it's a scheduled run then the external trigger will be false and other information coming to the dag code table uh, stores the code for the dag and provide information about the file path and when the last dag code was updated so let's view so here you can see here the column name is file loc which stands for the location so it denotes where the dag is actually residing then comes the last updated so when the dag got last updated and being passed by the scheduler then comes the source code if you look here you can find the whole source code for the dag then comes the dag tab uh, tag table so it shows 
the tag associated to each uh, tag so so here you can see the tag id and corresponding to each tag id you can find the tags associated to it so for example if this is the tag id you can find bash tutorial learning operator are the tag which are associated to each of the tag id then comes the variable table so this table stores the key value pairs used for storing and retrieving the metadata from the variables so let me go to this psql editor and write the variable so here you can see there are only two rows present so this means i have the owner key and value as admin stored in the variable and then i have a second variable whose key is generic info and here you can find the dictionary for the value associated with it then you can find the description associated to each key and then is encrypted it shows whether to store the uh, value in form of encrypted format or not next come the excom table so this table contain information about the data been exchanged between the task using the excom so let us see what stored inside this table so here you can see so first is the tag id then comes the key and then the then the tag id then comes the run id information then comes the timestamp when it got pushed so if we order by timestamp so here you can find the information what is the tag run id specific and unique then comes the task id then comes the key which is stored and then comes the tag id then run id and the timestamp so after this excom being pushed to the uh, in form of key value pair it can be retrieved using the key and the task id coming to the next table is the connection table so it stores the connection string for the external system or the database so let us have a view so here you can see all the connection id being present then comes the connection type of this connection id then comes the host schema login password and the port information then comes the is encrypted so if it is set to false then the your password will not be encrypted then comes the extra information required for the connection to establish then import error table so this table basically shows information if there is any import error when dag is being passed by the scheduler due to which dags are not visible in the airflow ui so let me copy this so here you can see there is no errors this means currently in my airflow you uh, there all the dags are being passed correctly and currently no error is being present moving to the next table that is task instance table so the task instance table plays a crucial role in tracking the execution history of the individual task within the dags it provides the valuable 
information for monitoring task progress diagnosing failures and analyzing the performance and ensuring the successful completion of workflows orchestrated by airflow so few of the columns in task instance table are task id which denotes the task present in the dag then comes the dag id then comes the execution date which denotes the start and the time at which the task instance was executed then comes the state which indicates the current state of the task instance then comes the start date which denotes the time stamp when the ta task instance started its execution end date when the task instance uh, execution is finished duration which denotes the duration of task try number which denotes what is the attempt of the task is currently running which will be greater than 1 if we have used the retry parameter then come the host name this means the host name of the machine where the task instance was executed then comes the unix name this means the username associated with the execution of task instance so let's see from the postgres So here you can see information about the task ID, then comes the DAG ID, then comes the run ID, then the start date, end date, duration. So here you can find the duration, how many time, uh, what's the duration the particular task has ran. Then comes the state, whether it got success, failed, skipped. Then comes the try number, which basically denotes how many times a task has basically ran then comes the max tries which denotes the maximum number of try uh, times a task can execute after which the task will be declared as failed then comes the host name then comes the unix name then comes the pool where your task is running which is set to default pool which has by default 128 worker slots in it then comes the operator so each task is associated with an operator so we can find which task is associated to which operator moving to the next table that is logs table so the log table is essential for troubleshooting and debugging the task within the airflow workflow it allows users to review the execution logs of tasks monitor their progress, identify errors or issues, and analyze the performance. Logs stored in the log table provide valuable insight into the execution history of task, helping the users to maintain the reliability and efficiency of the airflow workflows. So here are the few key columns in the log table. First is DAG ID, which is associated and unique across the airflow environment. Then comes the task ID which identifies the task associated with the log entry, execution date, the date and time at which the task instance was executed, event, which ind indicates the type of event log such as started or failed, DAG hash, it's a unique hash key rep representing the DAG structure, task instance, which is a unique identifier for the task instance, owner, who is the owner of task, Let's view the log table. So here contains all the information and which is stored by the task during its execution. So here you can see the date of and time of the execution, then the DAG ID, then the task ID then the owner then the owner display name and the other information associated to each of the task so in this video we have seen about the airflow metadata database and all the tables which are present inside this metadata database 